Hello everyone, happy Sunday. And we are back with our weekly webinar. And today's webinar is gonna be very interesting as uh, you probably heard what's been happening um, in the past couple of days. We'll go through that and just to remind everyone, of course, especially uh, to our new listeners and visitors, the purpose of this webinar is to give us structure and understanding what is happening in the upcoming week, how we can structure our trading, what can we focus on. Uh, we'll be going through some uh, fundamental things, some economic events, and then uh, we'll go to individual instruments and looking at the technicals, at the charts, and possible scenarios for trading. And I always like to say, and I'll say it again, uh, you plan your trade and then you trade your plan, which brings more clarity and more structure to our trading. So before we go uh, any further, as usual, I'd like to, to read the risk warning. Any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for informative purpose only and should not be construed or applied as investment advice, a recommendation or suggestion. See if these are complex instruments and come with high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 71% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. And you can find the full disclosure statement at our trade dot com our website okay and uh these are the contacts you can uh keep in touch with us through twitter and of course the youtube channel is loaded with a lot of useful information that includes uh, tutorials fundamental analysis videos technical analysis videos etc and as usual agenda uh we'll go through indices forex pairs commodities and stocks and uh Let's go, let's start uh, with uh, fundamentals and and just try to understand what happened. It was a Thanksgiving day on Thursday and that day the markets are closed. Uh, and then it's in the chronological order. I think there was Thursday or later on Thursday when the World Health Organization announced that uh, they discovered uh, a new variant of uh, COVID. And uh, now we know they give it the official name, and uh, it's uh, Omicron, A uh, O M I C R O N, and uh, scientific it, it's B dot one dot one dot five nine eight. I guess that's the number of the virus. So the markets uh, really didn't take it uh, lightly, and I just took a slide here. This is what happened on Friday. When the market came back, there was a short session. As you could see, it ended, uh, I believe, at 1 p.m. New York time. But it was enough, even on the low volume, as we know that uh, the day after Thanksgiving, the volume usually it's low. People are celebrating. And you could see the Dow Jones was the biggest loser, 2.5%. It lost 905 points. S&Ps. 500 index lost. Now, just to understand, these are not the futures. These are the real index, the trading during the trading hours. So uh, it went down, the S&P index went down 2.27% or 106.8 points. And NASDAQ, almost the same, 2.23, lost 353 points. So the, mar the market really panicked. And... Um, uh, it, it, even without the discovery, the market was already kind, kind of uh, uh, boiling from all these issues, especially in Europe, as Germany is building a lot of cases and a lot of European countries actually had a lot of cases and a lot of deaths, unfortunately. And now that's the new variant that just came out and they said they'd been detecting it in, in Belgium, Israel, Hong Kong and uh, it originates from South Africa. So there were some emergency uh, measures taken. The White House announced restrictions starting on Monday, 
and uh, they will be restricting uh, traveling from South Africa as well as other African countries, including Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and uh, Malawi and other things and uh, other countries and European Union and Singapore, UK, Japan uh, taking the same measures. So uh, the market reactor, we'll, we'll take a look la uh, later at uh, the platform and see how instruments, individual instruments reacted to it. Uh, indices reacted the most, some stocks of course that are making those moves and oil reacted uh, very strongly to the downside and we'll talk about it in a moment. So uh, the whole focus, uh, just to understand, uh, yes, the market could have overreacted, maybe low, low volume helped that drop to go without uh, much resistance. Um, we're having the weekend in front of us and I think Monday is gonna be crucial uh, if we have any updates. Uh, so far, I've read some articles that said that uh, the virus is spreading faster than others and so on but i guess we'll have more official news on monday and that also includes uh how uh will uh will the new variant uh react to vac vaccination and everything else and i think um the producers of vaccines are working on it now and they need some time also to analyze it and see so in the upcoming week it's going to be very crucial whether they say okay we're really screwed and the market will continue falling or to say, okay, things are under control, which I don't know if that's realistic, but uh, you know, I'm speculating here. Uh, on the human level, of course, I, I, I hope that uh, they will find uh, the way to really stop the spreading and things will get uh, towards the getting normal, but let's see what happens. So that's as far as the, the main focus and it's gonna be the next week, it's gonna be very crucial. Um, and so on. Now, uh, let's take a look really quickly at uh, upcoming week of the events. Uh, there are a few things. I just chose the high impact events. So we have um, Governor, <coughs> excuse me, of Bank of Japan speaking on Monday. Then we have uh, inflation reports from Germany, Governor of Bank of Canada speaking, and the Fed. Uh, Powell is speaking on Monday, and um, I think he's going to be speaking at uh, introducing the New York Innovation Center event. That's the Monday speech. He, he's speaking again on Tuesday, and on Tuesday, he will deliver testimony in front of the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, and he will be along with Treasury Secretary Janet Allen. So this speech will be, I think, more important on Tuesday. It's about banking, and of course, I'm sure he's gonna be talking about COVID and anything else that's gonna be uh, part of the speech as well. Uh, then we have uh, from China manufacturing PMI, we have consumer price index, the inflation data from European Union, and we have uh, GDP from Canada, important numbers on Tuesday. Wednesday, GDP from Australia, retail sales from Germany, governor of Bank of England speaking, and we have ADP employment, uh, data coming up and uh, manufacturing PMI. So ADP is before the NFPs on Friday, which we'll get there. We have trade trade balance from Australia. And Friday is the highlight of the week as far as the announcement. As we know, the most important announcement of the month is the non-farm payroll from the US. And that's coming up on Friday. Canada reports as well. Usually they do together. We have service PMI and retail sales from Europe. So this is the calendar. You can look up other events, but I just chose the most important ones. Okay, so let's move now to the MT4 platform, and then we'll start. Uh, first of all, we'll see what happened uh, with the announcement and how things reacted. And I will start with crude oil, take a look. So crude oil already was sliding down here on the, um, talks about releasing the the oil that's been reserved from few countries. The US started, other countries were ready to do it. And um, then with the announcement, this is one day drop. So just to give you a proportion of it, uh, 77.54 was the high of the day. 
and the low was 67.40. We bounced a little bit, about 50 cents of it, but pretty much $10 move. And again, uh, talking about the the levels, uh, this is where, we, where the whole move started. The recent move up, a robust move up started from here, and we actually stopped the drop here. So it just shows that uh, it support, and sometimes, especially after the long retest, is standing. So for those people that pay attention to these levels, uh, they, they throw some bids here and actually pushed it, pushed the price a little bit higher. So let's see if that level holds. Uh, and as we showed in, in the slides, the indices were selling off and that includes global indices. So this, this one, uh, the Dow Jones was the weakest one and um, it dropped significantly. Let's see what happens next week. Um, as far as the levels, you could see also, this is where we dropped from back in uh, June. We made uh, a lower low from here. Then we played around this level over here with the tails and so on. So we came right to that level again. Let's take a look at uh, S&P 500, if we can make any sense out of it. S&P is hanging in the air. So uh, I've read a few things, some analysts saying, which for me, just just to see what they say, but uh, this move right here, high was 45.41. Okay, so Monday, there's a possibility that well, we might continue lower to this level. And those analysts are saying that if we break the 4,500, that's uh, pretty much nothing to hold it for the next level. So let's see what happens. The S&Ps, uh, there was no pullback at all. This is one hour chart. Uh, we just went, uh, this move happened uh, with a spike and then we continue lower. So, and then we close at the lows on S&Ps. Um, NASDAQ, NASDAQ uh, kind of uh, bounced from this level. And I think one of the reasons that because some stocks that kind of are anti-COVID uh, stocks or the ones that went up in the, in the first wave of COVID, that includes Netflix. Net Netflix actually had a nice move up on the news. And I think that would really uh, help NASDAQ bounce a little bit but this is the level from which we we, we made the recent uh, all-time high so that's uh, 15,980 let's see what happens next again we're not gonna guess like I said in the beginning that uh, we'll have more information after the weekend and Monday we'll have uh, more highlights and more direction uh, it could be like I said any, anything is possible could be that we just bounce back and make highs again I, I really don't know but uh, we'll have to wait till Monday. And uh, let's take a look at uh, world indices. This is Nikkei at a huge drop here, and then uh, bounce towards the end of the session. Um, Nifty 50 dropping, and that's what we spoke about. It. Remember when the whole market had some correction, and Nifty was just going higher. And I said it's just a matter of time when market turns around, this thing's going to fall in a free fall and it did. So it's kind of in the air now. Uh, let's see what happens there. Uh, European indices DAX had a huge drop, of course, with the gap and dropping and um, uh, maybe we'll find some kind of support around this level here, actually where it closed. Uh, Europe is in trouble already and now with this new variant, uh, there's more panic and as you could see, the index really dropped. CAC 40, free fall, uh, even not look at the Spanish index. We usually don't look to, look at, it's not really popular in trading, but uh, as you could see, old indices fell tremendously. So um, oil and indices are very sharp fall, uh, maybe finding some support, but again, we'll see what happens on Monday with the updates on on this uh, COVID variant. Um, one commodity actually went up. I really don't know why, 
but natural gas, I guess it was ready for it, but still it just went up at a robust day, really very, very strong day for natural gas on Friday. So let's see what next for that commodity. Um, metals, copper went down as, as it's very sensitive to what the market is doing, especially China and um, in general, what economy is doing, it reacted uh, significantly to the drop in indices. Gold initially went higher, but then closed pretty much flat. That's very interesting. Other metals uh, had a very weak day. They just sold out heavily. Soft commodities, cocoa dropped. But what the, the reason I brought it up really we just make it's like making like a triple bottom here we came from here we retested we went higher made a little bit of uh, channel here and then we're back we're back to retesting the support so it's very interesting how this week will be for coco uh some people like to trade it it's a volatile instrument uh let's take a look i just i like when things hit the levels that's the reason i brought it up uh, wheat sold out with a gap. Soybeans didn't hold this level. We gapped, but didn't fall. So we back in the channel that we we were for a moment for a, for a while here between 11 11.82 and 12.62. We're back into the channel. Corn gapped down, but then it closed higher. So this could be uh, maybe a signal for continuation to the upside, whatever the fundamentals are, but technically we gap down and we went high, we closed at the highs and above the previous resistance. So that looks a little bit bullish. Let's take, let's go now into currencies. And we'll, we'll start in with the dollar index as an indication. Uh, it was a down day for dollar, it fell down together with the US markets and markets in general. So uh, the first thing I ask myself, uh, okay, where's the money going to? The stock sold out, the oil sold out. Um, it was a risk off, right? Risk off usually goes to gold, didn't happen, right? Gold got flat and I found out where the money went. The money went straight to Japanese yen and uh, take a look, dollar yen dropped significantly. And actually I have a collection of all the instruments or majors at least uh, connected to the yen. I start with Australian dollar. Let's take a look, sharp move. By the way, Australian Aussie JPY is coming to a level from which we made a high. So also speaking of levels, we'll be watching this uh, level where we, where we actually trade it. Euro JPY. Same thing, a strong sell-off. NZD JPY, strong drop, and we're approaching the level from which we had a vertical up. So very important to see. Some people like actually to catch these drops, but again, you know, uh, people that catching drops, you have to you have to understand where to catch them. You can catch them here and get caught. You can catch them here and get caught, and then you have a very strong level, which your chances. To, to catch it and not to get caught and something that um, I like I like to use as they, they use this terminology in trading catching a falling knife so you know catching a falling knife was very painful here and now we're approaching the level that it could probably get a little bit safer again no guarantee 7692 we're approaching that level we actually maybe 20 pips higher than that so some people probably the ones that are watching these levels and waiting for those that maybe have some limit orders they were just watching to get in cat jpy fall off from both sides the, the the yen got stronger as a safe haven and the canadian dollar went down on the oil crash and take a look as well we are approaching the level from which we started the whole this move up and there's also a possibility that we'll see some bounces. That's a series move. That's his one day move, right? Let's take a look. This is one day move on a weekly chart. And uh, GBP, JPY as well, so selling off. Uh, but here, no strong levels. If it continues, you probably need to find some kind of a strong support. 
CHFJPY sold out, but found it level also just to remind you, uh, Swiss franc uh, traditionally also safe haven where uh, some investors like to park their money uh, in time of uh, uncertainty or chaos. So this is it. Um, use the CAD when higher on the oil crash, of course. And we broke through the previous resistance here. This is the last resistance from which we sold, and we closed about it. So about it. So let's see what's next for USD CAD. Again, this is daily chart. On the weekly chart, you can see how, and that's what we mentioned a few weeks in a row. We said that we, if we get out of this range here, it will open space for continuation, and uh, this could be it. Uh, another thing on oil. Uh, just reminding myself that next week OPEC uh, is supposed to make the decision and now in the light of new things they might uh, I guess change whatever the plan was uh, because they had a lot of pressure from the US to increase production because um, Biden's trying to keep the price below 80 and uh, now the, the oil price is uh, way below 80 it's uh, 67 66 68 dollars uh, they might not need to do anything or maybe even the opposite. So we'll see the OPEC uh, meeting. I think it's uh, upcoming week as well. So um, so we we were talking about USD CAD as it opens uh, the space potentially to continuation to the upside uh, should the dollar get stronger and the oil continues to fall. Uh, let's take a look already in the major, in the major currencies, major pairs pound didn't do much uh, against the dollar uh, after the yen i think uh, swiss franc was uh, very strong against the us on this fall then euro also had a little bit uh, took a chance to take a little recovery we actually one two three four five days almost five and a half six that was a week uh, we're not gonna guess okay so we we really had a nice bounce on uh on euro we came from uh yeah more than 100 pips more and australian dollar sold out heavily and another thing on australian dollar we really approaching a strong level of support here this was a drop from which we made uh, a new high and then a lower uh sorry the higher low from here so this level could be a strong level that might hold 0.71 around that new zealand usd dropped and the same thing it actually did approach the level from which we made a high high a nice nice uh steep move up so also we we could see some kind of a strong support here potentially again anything could happen and if you look at the weekly chart on the other hand if we break to this level we can go and retest the lower levels same thing on Australian dollar as well. So we'll be watching it. And um, let's take a look at coffee. I think we mentioned coffee. Let's see what, what coffee did. Coffee continued higher and on, on the sell-off day as well. So it's been holding. Uh, this was a move. Uh, remember I told you the 238, let's go back to the chart on monthly chart. I said the 238, might be res the resistance and actually we did bounce lower from here uh, over here after we touched 238 we actually had a nice move lower but then we broke through it and we're holding so potentially we could see continuation to the upside it could be a shortage of coffee i mean it's a fundamental thing looks like it or it could be a short squeeze all the squeeze all the shorts are being squeezed out and um, accelerating the buying so that's as far as commodities uh, let's take a look uh, really quick at crypto Bitcoin uh, couldn't break 60,000 and this was the drop on uh, on Friday as low as 53 and a half thousand and now it's bouncing a little bit ethereum similar moves pretty much identical. So there's a lot of pressure on it, even though some article says that uh, next year it's gonna be 100,000 as far as Bitcoin, but there's a lot of pressure from um, China and India and also appointment. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, 
we had announcement uh, before the Thanksgiving, as was promised by Biden, that uh, Mr. Powell, uh, he's remaining as a as a Fed chairman, and uh, that actually caused that announcement caused Bitcoin to fall because he's really not so eager to to work on uh, on approving it or regulating and so on. And uh, the moment uh, it was reinstated. That meant uh, not so good for Bitcoin and it sold out. So they were hoping that uh, whoever was supposed to come uh, instead of him were more open to regulating uh, the cryptocurrencies. It didn't happen. Okay, let's move to individual stocks and uh, we'll start with Boeing. Boeing really gave down, as we know, uh, the, the most hit company were travel companies, oil companies, and anything to do with leisure, leisure and stuff uh cruises and so on so boeing got hit uh let's see disney disney also gapped down and um netflix as we said it was up um tesla tesla didn't sell as you can see the the the, the strong companies even the strong market are not really uh falling that hard yeah he had to move down a very insignificant move down. Uh, let's take a look at retailers. Walmart had to move up but closed lower. Facebook, we just go through basically the mood in the market was down. So we saw the huge sales over 2% of all the indices. So all the major stocks sold out. Uh, Nike didn't do much. GE gap down. Pfizer was a success story as is. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna are the leaders in, uh, in the war against uh, COVID with the vaccines and the Pfizer gapped and continues higher. And just to tell you, we're in the air. So this could be a revolution for pharmaceuticals. There's nothing to hold it from moving higher. And it could continue on all this news and, and uh, development. 